Hey, this is Dylan Gardner, and you're watching The Music Enthusiast. Hi, I'm Sarah from The Music Enthusiast blog, and today I'm here with Dylan from Communicant. How are you? Hello. I'm fantastic. Great. <laughs> um, how have you been dealing with all of this happening in the world as an artist? I'd say at the beginning, it was a little tough to try to create because I was so wrapped up about worrying about the safety of everyone around me and like my family and my friends. Um, I would say that has always been there in the background and music had then become an escape from that, which was kind of nice mentally, like for mental health and everything. And um, I did find what started to happen was listening to records and making music became sort of like a, like a medicine, you know, kind of from, from the like kind of the fear and the anxiety and stuff. Um, and so it was, it was actually, it was really helpful for me. It was actually really uh, a really positive thing. And I got, I got to a point where I was um, suddenly able to write a lot, um, check out a lot of new music and, and really get in a healthy headspace. What new music have you discovered? <laughs> oh boy. Um, well, I'm always following vinyl blogs. I'm always reading uh, lists. Um, I'm always trying to find more obscure things. I, it's been a lot of phases. It's like if I go back and look at my Spotify, I'm almost surprised. Um, I got really into, I got really into kind of quiet singer songwriter records, stuff that's very like uh, kind of, de you know, de-stressed, just kind of like uh, songwriters like Judy Sill um, or like, uh, Bill Withers and this guy like Arthur, they, they, they were, uh, or Donny Hathaway, they, they were really big on me. I got into a lot of like private press psychedelic records, you know, like people in Cleveland in their basement, like with a fuzz pedal kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, really, it, um, no, no limits, certainly. And a lot of craft work, uh, a lot of um, one of the phases. I, I mean, I listened to a lot of MF Doom when he passed because he was big on me and that was really hard. Yeah. Um, and I know you are a huge vinyl record collector. So what is your favorite record to play? Oof. Um, that's a tough one. I mean, my favorite album of all time is Revolver. Mm -hmm. I would say, but I mean, it's so, it's so special that I never play it. You know, it's like a, it's like a once in a lifetime thing. Um, I definitely, when people come over and I'm like showing them my stereo, <laughs> like I play um, either like uh, this pressing of Abbey Road that I have, or um, which is this uh, Japanese pro use press from like 1978, where it's just like, you can hear everything, you hear like the synthesizer, that always blows people's minds. Um, maybe, maybe that, maybe that's like my favorite thing to play to be like, wow. I mean, you know, like that's why I'm at the vinyl because it's just the sound stage is super deep. <laughs> that's a pretty good choice. <laughs> um, you could see my records right there. There's Tyler and there's a few in the back, but. Oh, those are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you used to make music as a solo artist and now you're in a group. So what inspired the change? Uh, what inspired the change was that I had always been listening to music that is more closer in vibe to communicant. Even when I was making the pop records, it was a weird disconnect. Like, I know when I was 16 and I would go to the record store, I would buy like 13 Floor Elevators or the Millennium or the Doors or like Jefferson Airplane. And that was always what I wanted to listen to. And I think I got, I think it got to a point where I asked myself, like, would my own music be my record collection? And I said, no. <laughs> and I'm like, well, then I'm lying to myself. And it was, it was a really hard kind of a process of trying to come out of my shell. And I realized that um, even though I felt like I was really good at making that pop music, that I was making that version of it a little bit out of fear or like um, a social norm that I should be making that type of music because that's what like is successful or something. And I think I, I think everyone arrives where they're going eventually, like as a human being. And I just, I, it just it it just got to a crossroads where I was like, I can't keep lying to myself, and I, I just want to be this blank canvas again, this this thing that was just endless possibility. Um, and it was the hardest decision I've ever made in my life at the time. And looking back, it was the best decision I've ever made in my life at the time. I have so much happiness. I'm so free, and life is 
box of chocolates ever since I <laughs> decided to make that change. Um, but I didn't know that it was going to be a band, a communicate as a band until I finished the album. And then I was like, this is, this feels like a band, you know, and I feel like this is best presented as a band. Great. <laughs> um, it seems like even like further along the line of like your solo queer, like from like, um, privacy and the last few singles you released as a solo artist it seemed like you were going more into the psychedelic realm of things yeah yeah uh, it, it was the transition process was funny because you have the what i consider the top 40 sounding kind of stuff and then and then i had like what i what i would call like my rebellious phase I feel like every teenager goes through, or like I dyed my hair, I got a tattoo, I pierced my ear, I started making like kind of R and B, so I, like with, with like a pinky toe and psych pop. It, it it seemed a little reactionary looking back at the time now, um, but that was like sort of this in between period, and I and I made a record like that in my room, and I sat in it for a minute, and I was just like this. I'm still lying to myself. This is still, this is halfway there, <laughs> but it's, but it's not, it's not there. So I scrapped it and, and then made what is now the upcoming communicant album. And uh, again, that was also the best decision. I mean, it was really tough. You know, I, it, it, it took a lot of time. It took all my money, like my life savings that I spent, you know, because my, my first two records were, were made, like with a label I never had worked independently before and recorded independently and mixed independently. But that was also freeing. That was also like, I feel like important to the artistic process. You don't need any of that stuff. It's, it was the best experience ever. Yes, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, your last release as communicant is She Moves This Guy and Prisoner, Prisoner Cloud. Um, do you feel as if like those two singles are like, a great way of saying like this is what communicant sounds like yeah i would say for sure um i feel like over time who knows where communicant can go um I, what i love about the band and the world i have and the vision i have in my head right now is it's uh sort of beyond this it can go any direction that i kind of see it in terms of uh, of psychedelia or rock music or or just singer songwriter type stuff it but uh she moves the sky is a really good representation of, of this album i'd say i think i mean it's going to be the first song on the album uh so and it was the last song written for the album which is always the case with oh, wow. me <laughs> so is the full album written yeah the full album's like, to be honest with you it's, it's been done since april I mean, I, I, I posted like April, 2019, <laughs> maybe like maybe June, 2019, that it was done and it was going to come out, you know, at the beginning of 2020. And then it just, you know, like, well, COVID happened. And then, I, and then to me, it was like, this isn't the time to release music. And then I, you know, just time just, whew, just went like this um but i wrote she moves this guy in that time so that was the only song that wasn't there so i've sat with the album for a while i'm glad that it is coming out soon <laughs> but in the meanwhile i've worked on the second record so oh wow uh i can't wait for the album i love your music again <laughs> thank you um are there any other things you could like tease about the project <laughs> Uh, let's see. Um, well, something fun I like to do, like uh, with Hypnotic Bridge, who I did the forty-five with, the Prisoner Cloud, and and she moves this guy. I I did. Uh, I wanted the forty-five to be special, so the forty-five is going to sound a little different than the album. Like the album's going to have a different guitar solo on Prisoner Cloud, okay. and I think it'll have even a different intro. And she moves this guy. I'm still weighing that one out in my head. Um, it's it's an album that I I spent many many months crafting to be an arc like a singular experience. I want people to, you know, sometimes people ask you who are you making this record for. I'm making this record for myself. When I listen to records and I'm in my bed, I put on like my 
my like wavy blue light and I listen to records on my turntable and like close my eyes and just go somewhere else. Like that is the ideal person this record is made for, but it also could, could work in your car, you know, just like blasting up um, at least the first part of the album. Someone described the album to me as the beginning sounds like a group of people all having a great time together and you walk away from this party and you wander out into a field and suddenly you're alone with your existential thoughts. That was how someone described to me. And I was like, this is actually perfect because this is me at a party. <laughs> oh, so it's like a full experience. I can't wait to hear Yes, it is definitely um, an experience. My, my whole life has been about crafting albums. I've never cared about singles or hits, but album, even, even with the pop records, like the pop records that were crafted to be an album. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Um, could we, cause you're a huge record collector again. Um, could we ever expect Communicant on a vinyl record? Oh yeah. Oh, big okay. time. I'm working on it right now. It is, um, I, I've really been a perfectionist with Communicant, which I, I, I like in the long term because I look back and I'm like, yeah, like every detail, you know, was perfectly rounded. Something I love about Daft Punk. Um, like with them in the news this week. I love that every single second of their career was like totally art directed and figured out. Um, so with the vinyl, I've been, as a record collector, this has to be my standards. <laughs> so um, it's been designing it, working with an artist. Yes, for sure. Definitely will be communicant uh, vinyl. We have a final uh, 45 already, which is really cool, but uh, full length is soon. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> um, last question. Our music website focuses on up and coming artists. Uh, do you have any favorites that you want to give a shout out to? Um, well, I love Trip Tides. They're a, they're a modern psych band that I feel are amazing. I love uh, uh, Frankie and the Witch Fingers, Levitation Room. These are all uh, dream phases. Uh, they're all bands that are uh, also sort of involved with hypnotic bridge you put out the 45 communicants doing but um i just i love i'm so happy that i just feel like there's like this there's like a scene there's like this this scene of bands that i really really love when i was going to shows before quarantine yeah i i was like this i'm i'm getting that sort of feeling that people are like i'm bored of the wrong generation like this is a scene happening in front of my eyes and it's really cool and everyone knows their stuff and everyone's really good and super good at writing melodies and uh those artists really get me through a lot and i might be forgetting a few but those are specifically them amazing so this is communicant i'm sarah from music enthusiasts see you next time see you later